All right, Tiffany. So you talked about finding the right match is important. Yeah. So um, as any student who's going into this residency process and you're starting to look for a resident site, um, I know it can be pretty stressful, but just relax and think about what you want out of a residency site. Um, whether you want to really focus on um, a lot of prosthetic patients, a lot of orthotic patients, a mix of both, um, if you're looking more research or clinical, because um, they're not just interviewing you to see if you can be a good fit for them. You are interviewing them to see if they're a good fit for you, because um, it is about you and what goals you want to achieve, um, and whether you want a site that's going to be really structured and tell you exactly what you need to do every day and what you're going to be doing all through the residency, or whether you want a little bit of freedom. You want to be able to set your own schedule and decide what patients you want to work with and when you want to work with them. Um, be able to rotate through different clinicians to see what each person does. Um, these are a lot of things that you can be thinking about when you're looking for a residency site. Um, also, if location is important to you, um, whether you want a big site um, that is a big company that you want to work through or whether you want something more small mom and pop. Um, I know one of the things that I was looking for was just how many residents they've had in the past um, and how set up their system was, if this was something new to them or whether they had been successful with a lot of people in the past. Um, now, you had mentioned uh, you were one of the few people that asked to speak to former residents or current residents. Um, yes. Did you find that valuable? Um, yes, I think it's incredibly valuable to talk to um, past residents that are, were at the residency site that you're looking at. Um, so that's one of the first questions you can always ask when you're kind of doing that introductory stuff is, can I have the contact information or email of your past residents if that's okay with them? Because they're the ones who are really going to be able to tell you what their experiences was like. They're going to be uh, the most honest with you and tell you what they liked, what they didn't like. Um, and maybe give you some ideas of what, when you go in and you're doing that interview process, that might be able to get improved a little bit, or you might be able to talk about to make your experience better than theirs was. What's a question that you wish you had asked that you didn't? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, I think when... Because I was shocked when I was meeting other people that were coming out of residencies and we were getting to start taking our tests um, on how little experience they had on some of that patient contact with prosthetics and orthotics, especially prosthetics, um, which I had never thought to ask that beforehand was just how hands-on I was going to get to be. I ended up being very lucky. I had a residency site where I really got to work with a lot of patients and get pretty independent pretty quickly. Um, that's not always the case. So if you want to go into those tests and really feel prepared, um, that's something you need to be asking about was how much am I actually going to get to take a patient from start to end um, on my own by myself because that's that hands-on experience is going to be the most valuable when it comes to getting ready for those tests. Thank you. Um, it seems like a lot of the residency sites don't actually have active residencies. How do you weed yes. them out? Um, that, that's definitely a big thing when you get onto those NCOPE sites. They're going to have all kinds of locations across the map, um, but a lot of them were maybe set up just to have one resident at one point. They knew somebody, they wanted them to come back and do the residency there, and then they never wanted a resident after that. Um, personally, I had a spreadsheet where I listed each site that I was being in contact with, when I called them, when I emailed them, when I followed up with them, if they ever got back to me. So I could systematically be like, okay, this one's not responding to me, or I did get in contact with them and they're not looking for anybody, so I can cross that off my list. Um, because it shocked me how many places that I tried to get in contact with and how many didn't respond. So you're going to have a pretty significant list of just people you're trying to get in contact with. Don't limit yourself and think, oh, I'm just going to apply to like maybe five to ten residencies. No, you're going to be inquiring into a lot of different locations just to weed out those ones that aren't even looking for a resident. Um, so don't be afraid of checking as many places as possible. And... Having gone through the process, how do you think residency sites 
should respond to resident candidates? If they're really looking for a resident, um, they should get back in touch with you within a couple weeks or so. Um, I know people get busy and they don't always look through their email, but if you've called somebody or emailed them and sent them your information and within a month they won't respond to you or if you check back in with them and they're not responding to you, just don't waste your time on them because they're not looking. They're not actively being like, we want somebody part of our team. We're paying attention to it. Um, also, it'll be kind of what that first conversation is if they're like, hey, let's set up maybe like a just get to know each other conversation or maybe schedule a video interview and then an in-person interview. They're going to have their process figured out and they're going to want to get to know you. If they're just calling up and you have talked to them for a few minutes and they don't really seem that interested, they're probably not serious about pulling in a resident and really educating you. And that's another thing to be thinking about because as you're also weeding through some of these residency sites, some are actively wanting to teach you and let you be a part of it. Some are smaller companies that they need somebody there to take over some of the jobs that they can't do themselves. Uh, don't like to use the word grunt work, but that does happen. <laughs> They're just looking for somebody to do all their diabetic shoes so they don't have to worry about it. Um, so don't be afraid to investigate and ask those questions. You don't want to end up at a residency site that six, seven months in, you're like, I've done diabetic shoes and I haven't been able to do anything else. You really want to be able to get all of those um, checklists marked off on all the experiences that you can see and get. That makes me think of a question that I frequently get from resident candidates, and that's how much fabrication is done in-house. Um, was that important to you, or now that you've been through it all, do you think that's important? Um, I will say that was one of the questions that I was asking, was how much fabrication, or do you have your own lab, that kind of stuff. Uh, now that I'm working in the field and in the real world, um, I hardly ever step foot in the lab. It's not really that huge of importance. Um, if you enjoy some of that stuff um, and you just want that to be part of your residency experience, that's good. Um, but as important as I thought that question was going in, it ended up not being as important later on. And what was that? Um, there's just a lot of stuff that I ship out and have somebody do it for me. Um, that just makes my job quicker and easier. I'm not taking a uh, half of my day or a big chunk of my day working in the lab. I can still go out and see patients. Um, it, it actually was something I had to get used to was letting somebody else do my plaster mods and letting somebody else do some of that fabrication work for me so I can open myself up to being able to do other stuff that's important during my day. Um, so... And I think because you spend so much time doing that kind of lab work in school, that's something you really think about and focus on. Um, but you'll find as you get in the field, you'll do less and less. You know, another question frequently get is, um, or a desire that people want to do two 12-month programs. Yes, that was another thing. When I first started looking for residency, I was 100% sure that I wanted to do a 12-month prosthetic and a 12-month orthotic. Um, and it just ended up the residency site that I chose that was going to be a good fit for me was a dual residency. It was 18 months. Um, and I loved it. I would recommend it. If you get the right residency site where you're really working with patients and able to be hands-on, getting it all done in those 18 months and being able to knock out all your tests at the same time, it, I, I think it's a huge advantage and gives you less time in that learning uh, student aspect. And you can just get those tests out of the way sooner. Um, but you want to make sure that you're getting the right residency site for that fit. Um, if I ended up at a residency site where I did 18 months, but I wasn't able to see a lot of patients and be really hands-on, it might not have been as beneficial. But being able to look at your schedule and be able to put orthotic and prosthetic patients on the same day and learn all that stuff at the same time is just easier than spending a year focusing on prosthetics and then a year focusing on orthotics finish your test, and then try to throw them all back in together. So I would recommend 18 months. On tests, is it, um, is it fair to expect a residency to do prep for you when it comes to the tests? And is it something you should ask about? I, it's definitely something that you should ask about. Um, the site that I was at, we 
did kind of an intro CPM test day kind of early on just to get an idea of what it felt like. Um, and then we did another one at the end right before the test. Because uh, the biggest thing, especially when it comes to the CPMs, is just getting used to that atmosphere and being in that situation um, and not being stressed out about it. Because um, it always gets a little bit more stressful when you're put on the clock and somebody's staring down at you. Um, so that's ask your residency sites about that. Ask if they have notes from past residents that give advice on how to study or what they felt was really important to focus on for like the written and the written simulation. And ask them about having a mock exam. Um, if they do that, if they'd be willing to do that, if they get other past residents involved to help you out with that, because it is very, very helpful to get those mock exams in. Fantastic. Thank you. No problem. <laughs>